Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Nochowskas. Today is the 30th of April 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we I'll also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free guys to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research uh, tab right there on the top. So, it will take you to this page. As I said, um, I, I think you can find something useful here for yourselves. So, um, now then, a uh, quick update on what's happening here globally. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me just quickly update the number. Um, so, uh, yeah, one moment. There we go. So yes, it, it, the total amount has increased, uh, but not well. It, uh, that's the global figure. So uh, last time we looked at it, it was three million one hundred and thirty. So uh, now, yeah, increased by around sixty sixty thousand globally. So still better than it was before. So yep, uh, we'll continue monitoring all this, um, and I hope you guys are all staying safe and and taking necessary precautions. Um, now then, jumping into the charts. Now the first one I want to touch on here is the FTSE 100. Um, I looked at this one uh, yesterday and basically I talked, I'll, I, will re I will mention a few of these uh, that I looked at yesterday because there were, there were some interesting moves so um, basically, yesterday I talked about uh, the FTSE and the, da and the German DAX and the French CAC as well in the morning. And uh, basically what I was saying here on the FTSE that if, if it continues to balance above this 5,895 territory, then there's a good chance for this one to drift further north. This is what, what exa exactly what it did. It traveled higher. And, uh, well, the next target, as I've mentioned, was this uh, 6,231 zone. So uh, probably this is going to be our level uh, that we're going to be targeting. Uh, for, for now, of course, that's the high of the 10th of March. Um, looking at the cash index right now, the, the cash index is currently balancing at around uh, 6,180 zones, so basically already slightly above the uh, yesterday's close. Um, so it kind of just makes it, it cl puts it closer to this level, to this barrier. Uh, don't get me wrong, we would, would like to see a nice good test of this 6,460 territory, which is the low of the uh, the lowest point of February, and also co it coincides with the 100 EMA here on the uh, on the daily chart. So, but uh, we'll take it uh, carefully, we'll go slowly, and for now we're just targeting this level. Uh, maybe today we could see a test of it. So this 6,231 zone, keep your eyes on that one. Um, jumping into German DAX now, the same story here. We had a nice uh, move higher uh, through this uh, through this barrier. Although the day, the previous day we uh, uh, or should I say the mm, the previous day the, on the on on Tuesday uh, we saw the index kind of still closing slightly fractionally below this barrier. However, still it was enough for the bulls to kind of push this one higher, and uh, you can see that it. It not only closed kind of above this barrier, above this 10,820, but also above this uh, the 10th of March high near the uh, 11,032 territory. So basically, in other words, it kind of stayed above this psychological uh, 11,000 zone. So of course, all this is kind of looking quite nice for the buyers. And the next target for us is around the 11,447, or in a way you could round it up towards the 11,445. 
for sorry, 11,450, uh, which is the low of the 6th of March. And it also coincides with the 100 EMA on the daily chart. Looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is also above the yesterday's close and it's currently balancing at around 11,270 zones. So basically we'll have a nice little opening gap here to the upside. Um, so, um, like I said, for now we're just going to target this area. Uh, don't get me wrong, we do we do like the area around the uh, around here uh, near the low of mm, the near the low of fifth of March, which is around the eleven thousand eight hundred and forty five zone. So, uh, and that almost coincides with the two hundred EMA here on the daily chart. So we'll we'll keep this in mind. Um, however, this is going to be quite interesting to see if the index can actually go and form. Uh, um, go higher and, and how far it can go and how far it can create this new high for April because to, don't forget that this is today's the last trading day for April and uh, yep uh, be very careful as we may get some surprises or something uh, so and also don't forget that tomorrow um, tomorrow some markets will be closed so yep um, it could be quite uh, a, a less volatile uh, day tomorrow however uh, well I'll still cover the videos I will still do the traders espresso and tea time and then yep we'll we'll pick up on, on some of those instruments but for now looking at this one uh, the German DAX here yes it is pushing higher so for now our next target is around the 11,445 zone in order for us to examine the downside again well the downside will be um, I would say it's it would be a downside inside this little range here so if it drops back below the 10,820 zone then yes we will aim for lower levels. Um, CAC 40. So the French end index popped higher nicely to the upside, broke above this 4,579 territory, and now it's kind of shifting further north. Um, so, yep, uh, for now, like I said, we are going to remain more bullish than bearish. And, <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, yep, the next target for us is around the 4,925 zone, which is the high of the 10th of March. So we'll keep an eye on that one. In terms of the downside, we would need to see this one falling back below the uh, 4,333 zone in order to aim for lower levels. Uh, Brent oil, so pushing higher. Uh, yesterday it popped to the upside and managed to stay above this uh, lowest point of March near the 21.64 zone. And uh, it also managed to break above the... 23.20 zone which was the high of the 23rd of April so uh, good a good sign here uh, of course we will continue uh, aiming the upside for for now uh, however we will be very very careful near this uh, near this 21 day EMA and near the 27.18 territory which 18 territory which is the near the lows of 15th and 16th of April so it could be a good, if it previously acted as a good area of support, now it could be a good area of resistance. So in a way, what we could see here is uh, the uh, the commodity pushing higher, uh, maybe f finding some resistance somewhere around here near the 21-day EMA or maybe near the 27.18 zone and then reversing back down a little bit. So maybe going for a bit of correction. So again, guys, for now, uh, be very careful. Today's the last day of the of the month. So uh, let's see how this monthly candle will end. I mean, for now, it seems to be forming a possible doji. So again, these tend to, uh, of course, uh, a according to the rules, technical technical analysis rules, tend to be reversal signals. Um, however, we will be very, very careful for now, guys. And, uh, well, uh, we will continue monitoring it day by day. We're not going to uh, try to predict the future here too far because, again, uh, still the uh, demand needs to pick up on oil. And, uh, well, uh, that's why we will remain a little bit on the cautious side. But, again, for now, from the very short-term perspective, Yes, there is a potential for this one to drift a little bit higher. Uh, Bitcoin, so popping higher nicely. So it managed to reach our target uh, yesterday, the 8,400 level. <clears throat> And uh, actually, it managed to also overcome this one and reach our other area, which I've talked about, and that was around the 2000, uh, sorry, 9,215 zone, which is the uh, the high of the 7th of, or actually the highest point of March. And this is where, uh, as you can see, it overcame the the uh, high the highest point of March, and for April now is higher, basically. So basically, if we look at the monthly chart on this one, uh, you can see this 
interesting graph here, <laughs> interesting chart, uh, interesting candle combination where, I mean, it kind of pu is pushing now. It's it's currently near this key area of resistance, um, so we'll keep on monitoring that because it's near the uh, close of, of January and uh, near the open of February candle, so uh, basically this area becomes quite an important one to watch and uh, this is going to be very interesting to see if the mm, this area is around 9,335 zones. So keep your eyes on that one. It will be quite interesting to see if we can overcome this. If it stays below, well, maybe going into beginning of May, we could see maybe a bit of a correction here to the downside. And then, uh, yep, uh, we could see maybe a reversal back to the upside again later on. But however, for now, uh, yes, it is pushing higher. Uh, this level that I just mentioned, the 9,335, this is where it's currently sitting at. That's the opening, uh, the, sorry, the closing uh, level of uh, of January and the opening level of February. So this is where it's currently sitting at. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. Uh, very interesting developments right now. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But for now, for now, we are leaning a little bit more to the upside. Um, maybe a bit of correction could be possible here. As, again, it all depends on how it's going to perform near this barrier, near this 9,335 zone, because if it gets a hold up here, we, then yes, we could see a bit of a correction uh, somewhere till around here. Um, and Or maybe even going all the way here towards the 200 EMA on the, on the, on the daily chart, and then maybe reversing back to the upside. First, to consider the downside, we would need to see a drop below the uh, maybe the 7,630 zone here, and then we could consider lower levels. Uh, NZD USD, quick update on this one. I talked about this pair yesterday, and basically what I was saying that there is a potential for this one to drift higher, and, it, and it is, this is exactly what it's doing right now. It's pushing higher. It's uh, finding key resistance near the 0 0.6130. Oh, sorry. It overcame this key resistance uh, near the 0 0.6130, and now it's making its way a little bit higher. However, if you remember what I was saying, um, we will be very careful near this downside line, this, taken, this one taken from the high of the 31st of December. Now, I do understand it's a little bit on the uh, tentative side, this downside line. However, we'll still keep an eye on it and because it kind of nicely coincides here with the 100 EMA on the daily chart. So in a way, it could travel a little bit higher, but get a hold up here and then reverse back down again. So... <clears throat> That's the scenario that we're keeping in mind. Uh, for now, yes, we will aim for slightly higher levels, but we'll be very cautious near this downside line. AUD and ZD, so per working out perfectly. So um, I've talked about this one, and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this level, the 1.0708 uh, territory, which was the low of the uh, 4th of November. And as you can see, the, uh, the, the daily candle closed below this, and we're now leaning a little bit more to the, the to the downside so everything's kind of working nicely here for now we will continue targeting slightly lower levels and this is where it's coming in line with this idea of nzd nzd usd and uh we could see this one pushing a little bit uh, nzd UN, we could see N AUD NZD pushing a little bit further down. Um, however, we'll be careful near this level, near the 1.0625 territory and uh, <clears throat> And uh, then uh, we could see maybe a nice rebound here and a push higher, or the last resort for the bulls could be around the this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. Um, the uh, like I said, it's going to be quite interesting uh, to see if, if if it can get a hold up here near this uh, near the high of a 16th of April, which is around the 1.0625. That's the level that we're going to be targeting for now. Um, GBP JPY. So. This one is a tricky one because uh, this one, uh, yesterday I talked about this pair and I was telling you guys that we need to see a daily close below this territory, below this 132.44 zone. It did not happen. We did get a break, but we didn't get daily close. So uh, it's back above this territory and in a way it's kind of we're, we're back into neutral territory because for us, uh, even to consider slightly higher levels, we would need to see a push above this 21-day EMA and a push above the 133.68 zone, which is the high of the 23rd of April. And then, yes, we could aim for higher levels. <clears throat> 
uh, for now, uh, we will stay neutral and uh, we'll continue observing. We need to see a nice good daily close either outside of this, either above this uh, 133.68 territory or below the uh, 132.44 zone. So keep your eyes on uh, this one. Uh, GBP Euro also at a very interesting uh, interesting spot. It is pushing higher. I talked about this one a while ago and uh, basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this this key area of resistance, uh, not the, uh, well, the 1.1515 as well, but uh, first the the, this, the the two lines that are coinciding together, the 100 EMA and the 200 EMA on the daily chart. And as you can see, they have been providing strong area of resistance, uh, strong resistance, and uh, now it seems that the pair seems to be willing to travel a little bit higher. However, we need to see that confirmation break above this 1.1515. 15 zone ideally we would like to see a daily close above this barrier and then we could aim for higher levels for now we will uh, let's say stay a little bit uh, cautiously bullish um, however like I said we need that confirmation break before considering uh, higher levels in terms of the downside the same idea remains we need to see a drop below the 1.1305 uh, zone in order to kind of aim for slightly lower levels guys uh, GBP USD also quick update here now uh, I, t I keep talking about this uh, this potential scenario uh, of a possible head and shoulders pattern here uh, this week and uh, yesterday uh, we we were see, we were seeing the pair declining. However, in my trader's tea time, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this 21-day EMA because, um, in a way, it continued to provide good area of support, uh, good support in general, um, and. Uh, then the pair you can see that reversed sharply to the upside here, um, but still remains below this barrier, below the 1.2523 zone. So if we do get a push above this, then well, maybe we could skip this idea of a possible head and shoulders pattern here, and then kind of we could start aiming for higher levels. For now, we're just careful as long as it stays below the 1.2523 territory somewhere around here. That's the high of the 17th of April. We will we will probably lean a little bit more to the downside however however don't get me wrong uh, like I said if it breaks this barrier then yes uh, we will aim for uh, for slightly higher levels uh, now USD CAD now this is where the tricky bit comes in so the um, the dollar is slightly on the negative side so as you can see after the pair drifted uh, higher here um, in the kind of in around 20th of uh, 21st of April it found resistance near this barrier let me just quickly highlight that that's the high of the 6th of April and uh, the uh, the pair uh, the pair found uh, resistance near this level so um, is if, if you remember what I was talking about in my previous videos, what I am afraid of here is that this level here, the key, this key area of support near the uh, 14, um, near the, the the low of the 14th of April, if it provides decent support and the um, and the pair rebounds then uh, well we could see a nice range forming here so basically in other words we could be seeing something like this here guys so this is something that uh, we don't want to see um, because ranges are sometimes difficult to uh, to to trade um, so uh, but again for now what you can do is just keep an eye on this level here the low of the the current lowest point of April which is around the 1.30 1.3856 uh, mark. So, as you can see, the uh, the pair is now trying to move lower, and the big question here is, can it break this level? So, uh, we'll keep on monitoring this. Um, don't get me wrong, we may see a good slide, a strong slide lower today, but if the daily candle is still going to come back at the end of the day and close um, above this uh, above this barrier, then well, I mean guys uh, this is again like I said could be confirming a nice range here uh, so for now uh, if we do get, get a daily uh, daily close here below this territory then well th this could lead towards slightly lower levels where the, f the next potential target of support uh, could be around here near the low of the 16th of March and that's around the 1.3734 and then we'll 
reevaluate everything again. Uh, Euro Aussie here, uh, I talked about this one yesterday as well, and this is where I was telling you guys to remain cautious because although we were trading near this key area of support, near the 1.6597, uh, what I was saying yesterday, it, in, in a way, it might still drift lower because, again, a lot of people, a lot of traders are, have been seeing this area as a good possible support zone and uh, maybe for a potential reversal. But what I was mentioning yesterday, guys, uh, this is what could happen. We could get a break here still. We could drift further south and um, some traders might get wiped out a little bit uh, and uh, basically who are long right now. Um, and then it might drop a little bit lower. Maybe could test. Uh, it, it could travel all uh, to the this little territory right here, the high of the 7th of Feb February near the 1.6448 zone. Um, <clears throat> And uh, it could find support here and then reverse back to the upside. Or it could actually, of course, continue drifting uh, further south because it has got a very good area of support here, the lowest point of February, uh, which is around the 1.6086 zone. But again, that's a quite a decent drop. We would need to see uh, the euro kind of weakening further. Uh, but again, for now, the next target for us is around here, near this near this 1.6448 uh, zone. We'll see how it performs around here, and then if it finds good support, maybe this is where the little reversal could come in. But again, let's not over-speculate on this too much. For now, it's still the trend is to the downside. So again, although we are searching here for a nice possible reversal sign, uh, however, the um, the you will see one uh, when uh, when you will see one. Basically, <laughs> uh, I can I can just put it this way. Uh, another good prob probably reversal signal for this one could be if you're more on the cautious side, is just wait for a break of this downside line here, taken from the high of the 20th of March, and then yes, we could consider higher levels. This could be the safe uh, safe play. Uh, just wait for. A violation of the uh, the current trend and then yep of the current trend line and then yes we could consider some higher levels so for now keep your eyes on this one now euro usd here is a little bit of a different story uh so yes on looking at this daily uh, chart uh, you can see that uh, we got finally a nice good daily close above this downside line or the upper side of the triangle and this is guys where I kept saying about uh, where, where I kept talking about the um, the the, the kind of not always when the descending and the descending and ascending triangles don't work all the time. So again, for now you can see that the vi there is a violation um, uh, of the of the upper side of the triangle. The, the for now you can see that this morning the pair already did drift lower. However, get a, got a hold up near this. Uh, near this downside line and uh, now it kind of drifted back up. Now the big question here today, can this push further north? Now if we look at the 4 hour chart, I talked about this 200 EMA that we need to see a break off first in order to aim for higher levels. Uh, however, it's a big day today for the euro. Uh, we we might see a lot of volatility, so that's why be very careful. We do have the uh, eurozone CPI figures coming out, and then of course we do have the interest rate decision from the ECB, and of course, uh, yep, then it should be the press conference of the uh, yep uh, Christine Lagarde. So. Basically, guys, it could be a very uh, interesting day for the Euro. So keep an eye on the Euro Aussie and the Euro USD on these two. And, uh, yep, we will monitor them carefully. Uh, try to be very ca careful on that because we might see a one-way traffic on, on on some of the Euro pairs. And uh, if you, were, you are one of those scalpers, so uh, be very careful on that, guys, because if you're going to go against the trend, you might get stopped out very easily. So again, for now, that's just a, a kind of the, let's say, the, a little bit of speculation. Uh, let's see how this is going to play out. The Of course, the suggestion is wait for the news to come out first, see the reaction, and then try to uh, see if you can uh, squeeze something out of that uh, initial reaction. Because uh, it's, again, when you're trying to predict before the news, then you're, it's 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 still 50-50. But you're here, you know, here in this one, is you're kind of exposing yourself to a little bit more risk. So 
rather wait for the uh, the data to the information to come out. So guys, I really hope you found it useful, and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. And uh, of course, uh, I really appreciate re really appreciate all your likes and views, and guys, and then uh, really thank you for that. And uh, if you want to catch my video later on, my my traders tea time uh, around 13, 15 GMT, and uh, yep, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful trading day. Bye-bye.